Well, uh, warm greetings from uh, South Africa, the city of Johannesburg, where I feel very grateful and privileged to be part of a thriving Jewish community uh, in the only other so-called city, city of gold, which is due south of the uh, real city of gold. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I'd like to begin my presentation with a nigun that I will a, a song, let's call it, that I wrote, um, and we're going to discuss that as our theme for tonight: a conversation between the Baal Shem Tov and Melech Hamoshiach, uh, the Messianic King, that took place in the heavenly realms. So here's the song. Hey, Mosa. Cause Hey, Mosa. Say your food to mine as a good song. Say your food to mine as a good song. Say your food to mine as a good song. Say your food to mine as a good song. La 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 Ze kalu kola klipois, the years red sun in the shuo, the yuklu gam heim la soy, the hudim vali yois komoi ho, the ozi kalu kola klipois, the years red sun.
So I wrote the first part of that melody um, on Chai Hevel, which is the, the birth date of the Baal Shem Tov and um, of the Baal Atanya, the Alter Rebbe of Chabad. And um, I want to go straight to the point um, of my uh, offering, my sharing tonight, something that has inspired me a great deal when I discovered these words. So it's a, it's a well-documented uh, letter that the Baal Shem Tov wrote describing a spiritual experience that he had. Um, he was 49 years old um, and he experienced something extraordinary on Rosh Hashanah of the year Tafkuf Zion, uh, the year 5707, 5507. Um, it's about 270 odd years ago, um, corresponding to 1746 in the secular calendar. And he experienced what some people might describe as an astral traveling experience, an alias nashoma in the Kabbalistic language, and an ascent of the soul to the higher dimensions of the, um, the spiritual realms. And he entered the chamber of Mashiach, the Messianic king where he witnessed him studying and learning Torah with uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, with the Avois, with our forefathers, Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. In fact, uh, he says explicitly with the, the Shiva Royim, the seven shepherds of the Jewish people, historically, uh, historical leaders, um, up in the heavenly dimension, learning Torah with them. And he entered there and he he spoke to the Melech HaMoshiach, to the Messianic king, and he said, Amosai ko asimar. That's how my song begins, quoting the Baal question, classic question, which uh, was a, a, um, a reiteration of a question asked nearly 2,000 years prior in the time of the Talmud by Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, when is the Master coming? When is the Messianic King going to arrive? And he got an answer directly from the mouth of the, the Holy King, Melech HaMoshiach. And he answered him and he said, by this you shall know. And what follows is certain signs, evidence of the messianic era having commenced that will take place in the future. Certain signs. Now this expression, Bezois Teda, is found nowhere in the Chumash, in the five books of Moshe, of Moses, uh, except in one place, um, certainly in the, in the uh, grammatical form that we find it here. There is another one other instance in, with a plural language, but this phrase, exact phrase, Bezois Tater, by this you will know, takes place on the threshold of the Jewish people's redemption from Egypt. So there's something quite inherently connected to redemption about this phrase, Bezois Tater. And in a Sefer, the Baal Hashem Tov Al HaTorah, um, which uh, I possess, so in the Hakdome, in a preface to the Baal Shem Tov's teachings, uh, the author of the preface points out that there's great significance to that phrase, by this you shall know. Uh, because he says the word Teda, you shall know, is all about consciousness, it's about das. Te da, the, the root is das, is about knowing, about conscious awareness. And the point that he makes is that redemption is a state of consciousness from which flows transformed behavior. And the, the Mashiach continued in his answer, and he said, By this you shall know. At a time when your teachings, what you have studied and learned and are sharing with the world, become public knowledge, become spread abroad, when your teachings become spread around publicly, and they are revealed in the world at large, and then he says a very classic phrase, which is uh, the subject uh, of, of uh, Chabad Nigun, uh, by your Futsu Maino Secha 
and your wellsprings will be spread abroad to the outside, to the dimensions that are alien to godliness, to the dimensions of the, um, of the secular world, secular dimensions of society, to the, to the lower aspects of the human condition within ourselves personally. When the outside dimensions of reality, the, the dimensions of reality that conceal godness, godliness <coughs> by default, are impacted by the Baal Shem Tov's wisdom, the Mayonas, the wellsprings of the Hasidic wisdom that the Baal Shem Tov introduced into the world. Which I have taught you, said the Mashiach to the Baal Shem Tov, and you understood, you compre comprehended. And here's a very beautiful, powerful phrase that he adds. V'yuchlu gam heim la'asois. Yehudim va'aliyos kamoicha. They too, meaning the ordinary people, the, the, the man in the street, so to speak, ordinary people that that occupy the, the the normal world around us, are impacted in such a way that they too will be able to perform mystical unifications, yehudim, and mystical elevations, kabbalistic dynamic processing like you, the Baal Shem Tov, are capable of doing. The ordinary man will have the same capacities. <coughs> Excuse me. The Mashiach concluded, and then all concealments to godly energies and godly light, klipois literally translates as a shell, a capitalistic term, for that which hides the divine, all those shields, all those masks that inhibit the open revelation of God's presence in our world, what could be associated with evil, will cease to exist. The year Ace Rotson be sure, and it will be a time of divine will divine fa favor, if you like, and salvation. So clearly this is an incredibly profound prophecy of the Messi Messianic era and some key characteristics of evidence that it has commenced. Now, what I want to present to you guys in my talk right now, and we have limited time, is what I believe to be very clear evidence in the world today of exactly this prophecy so that we can really with confidence and with joy and with trust in the Almighty accept a remarkable reality that we are now transitioning into and I don't think this concept is is, uh, is alien to many of our listeners on this beautiful festival that Aries has put up um, the concept that we are we have crossed the threshold or we're in the process of crossing the threshold and we're beginning to taste the transformative powers that are in the atmosphere of the world, uh, and it's not it's not easy to spot that one needs one needs to be attuned to the subtle changes that are going on beneath the surface, and um, doing that uh, is is really very highly supported by the study of Hasidic wisdom, because as uh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe taught us. Um, it's, 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 it's Hasidic wisdom in general and Chabad Hasidus for those that study it that articulate the, the God consciousness that will prevail in the world when Mashiach arrives. Now, this is not a new idea, God consciousness pervading the world. This, this occurs um, in the Haftorah of... Uh, the um, the the, the, the Achron Shal Pesach in Chutzlar, so the eighth day of Pesach, um, when we we recite when we chant the Haftorah of the prophecy of Yeshayahu, uh, chapter eleven, verse nine, Ki Molo Haaretz Daya Es Hashem Kamaim Liyam Mechasim, that the world will be filled with the knowledge. Again, the word Das Daya is the same root as Das filled with the knowledge of God like the waters cover the ocean. 
So humanity, society at large, at large, will be, so to speak, immersed in an ocean of God consciousness. That's the image that comes to my mind, the, the picture, the vision that Yeshua is, is casting for us. And of course, that verse is the conclusion of the Rambam's um, Mishnah Torah. The very last words he quotes are those very words, that the world will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem like water covers the ocean. Now one more, one more point I want to bring into this equation is a remarkable statement by the Rebbe. There's a couple of places that I've seen it, but I'm going to quote from a particular mimer, which is uh, perhaps my favorite mimer amongst all the uh, formal Hasidic discourses of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Um, Lahovin Inyan Meiris Chanukah, it's in for those that are familiar with the Chabad uh, literature. Sefer um, Amamorim Lukat Chelek Vav on page Ayin Base, page 72. The Rebbe says a remarkable thing here. He says that the culmination of the spreading of the, of the Hasidic wellsprings, the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov, will take on a new quality in the time that we are now entering. Because up till now, we've understood the spreading of the wellsprings to be that the deepest waters of Torah wisdom, the, the, the esoteric, mystical teachings of Hasidus and, and Kabbalah, will finally flow outwards to the outside realms and have their impact, their transformative impact. But the Rebbe says something incredibly profound and novel. He says what we're witnessing, the implication is what we're witnessing now. But this, this, was, uh, this was written in 19, uh, was said in a, in a discourse in uh, 1966 or 1965, Tafshim Chov um, the, the, the following words, the Indian Yafutsa minus Sechachutsa, the whole idea of the spreading of the wellsprings to the outside is as follows. Who? We won't just be finding the waters that have emanated from the well springs and reached there to the outside. On the outside, in the outside itself, we will find the well springs. Not the well springs will reach there. The well springs will manifest on the outside, and this is the pre the premise that I'm proposing: is that in secular knowledge, science, quantum physics, and particularly in my field of interest as a life coach um, and a therapist, um, new thinking, new models of profoundly effective models that are that are sh um, taking shape in today's world, and in fact, um, effecting remarkable transformation in consciousness. Um, techniques that I myself am using in my practice, techniques like matrix re-imprinting, techniques like IFS, internal family systems. Um, and if there was time, I could go into detail, but let me see how, how much I can convey of what I'm trying to put across here. Um, one more quick point is that, um, and this is something that Rabbi Wawa Jacobson has recently um, informed himself about the, 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 the IFS model, uh, you can look him up on uh, the yeshiva.net where there's a talk on IFS and Judaism. And um, I want to make reference to the, to the points that he, that he makes there because what we're seeing is that the new models of psychology and therapeutic process and the understanding of the human condition are profoundly and accurately reflective of Hasidic teachings. And Hasidic teachings, as we all know, are firmly rooted in classic Torah, in Gomorrah, and particularly in, in Kabbalah, um, the Zohar, Sefer Yetzirah, the Kabbalah of the Arizal, and so on and so forth. But the synthesis of all those teachings, which is the distillation of all the wisdom of the Torah into a form that is now ready for us to digest, to, um, to assimilate the, sh the shifting consciousness that is being brought in by the Messianic era. And we're seeing that kind of, these kind of paradigms showing up in the in the world of psychology now uh, we go back to the prophet Yechezkel um, the Haftorah for the first day of Shavuot in the the, 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 the the prophecy of the Merkava is something that the Balatanya draws on very heavily 
and uh, in many places, look at the Torah and others for him, um, where we have, I'm just going to distill the main points here, is that we have the picture of a chariot, which is a structure, a structured configuration of animal energies in the celestial spheres, a metaphysical entity or a system of animal energies, the face of a lion, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, etc., etc. There's also a face of a man as part of a foursome, right? And then the um, several verses later, he goes on to talk about a, uh, a firmament over the heads of, of these entities, of these energetic um, archetypal creatures, and the and um, the firmament had the likeness of a throne, the mus kise, the aldemus kise, and upon this likeness of the throne that is above the chariot, above these animal energies, the mus kamare odom olov milamila. Mechiskel the prophet witnessed the likeness of the appearance of a man on the throne. So to cut to the chase, the, the, the Bala Tanya talks to us and teaches us so one of the fundamental premises of the Tanya is that we have two souls. We have an animal soul, a Nefesh Abahamis, and we have a godly soul. Um, how does this align with the vision of the Merkava? So let's interpret it. The animal soul can be understood as our egoic identity. It's our physical, emotional, mental mold that is unique to us. We have fingerprints that no one else in the universe ever has possessed or ever will possess. We, we have particular features that are unique to us throughout all time and space. Every individual um, is comprised of a natural self that identifies me as me, as identifies you as you, with your name, with your history, with your narrative, with your life circumstances, etc., etc. That is your egoic identity. Rabbi David uh, Zeller, al Shalom, described the ego as your soul's way of showing up in time and space. But then on the throne above the chariot, there is the image of a man. That's the divine man. That's what the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya, refers to as the Nefesh of a kiss. And that, I want to suggest, is the rider of the chariot. Now, the default in the human condition is an assumption that we all make, that we are the chariot, that we are our instinctive selves, our feelings, our emotions, our tendencies, the way we mold it, and the, the, the complex configuration of nature-nurture that is our default identity. We attach ourselves to that identity. That becomes who we are, in our imagination, of course. Remember that the word Yetzer can also be understood perhaps as L'tzayer, to imagine. We have an imaginary, imaginary or illusory identity because at the end of the day, Ein od milvado, there is nothing but God. God chooses to manifest in the form of phenomena, and but it's all Him. So the part of us that is separate from God is an illusory identity which is ne a necessary part of creation. It's our soul's way of showing up in time and space, as mentioned. But that's not who we really are. We are the divine soul, the rider of the chariot, and we are therefore not bound to our instincts. We're not bound to our tendencies. That's not who we are. In the beginning of chapter 47 of the Tanya, the, the, the Bala Tanya uh, paraphrases the classic Mishnah in the Sechta Psochim. Uh, that we uh, that we say on Seder night at uh, the Passover Seder. Bechol dor vador in every generation of bechol yoyim vayoyim, the Alter Rebbe points out that it, it's not only a generational phenomenon, it's also a daily phenomenon in in the in the individual's life. The necessity to see ourselves as leaving Egypt. Now, Egypt in Hebrew Mitzrayim represents restrictions limitations, constraints. The, the, the river goes on to define what he means by that exodus or that freedom, that liberation from, from constraints. He says that's the exodus of the godly self from the prison of the body, 
which is a, a, a equated in the Zohar to a serpent's skin. And a serpent's skin can, one of the, the, the definitive characteristics of a serpent's skin is that the, a serpent or a snake sheds its skin periodically. So our ego is malleable. It serves a purpose. It, it's there for a day. We show up in, in, a, in a specific way um, on, on, on Yom Rishon. We go to bed at night and we perfect deficiencies or shortcomings in what we've accomplished so that we can shed yesterday's skin, yesterday's ego identity and adopt a new one. That's the message of, of the Balatanya, and that fits very well. We don't have time to go into the, uh, the IFS model, unfortunately. I can see my time's almost up. Um, but I'll just touch briefly on a, on a fundamental point that I want to leave you with, is that um, the IFS model, amongst others, is a very powerful psychological tool because it recognizes the concept of a higher self, which is, which is a chidush. It's a tremendous novelty in the secular uh, domain of psychology. Um, and it's very resonant with quantum physics, the idea of, of infinite possibilities and the idea of the interconnectedness with, uh, with everything, the oneness that underlies everything. So that what IFS is doing is with very deft and profoundly observed um, techniques, um, which I'm finding quite mind-blowing in my work with, with my own clients, is that... Um, when we recognize that the, 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 the ego self is comprised of various role players, various parts that are protecting us from past pain in our developmental years, um, we need to, to r r accept those parts and integrate those parts and um, allow those parts to realign themselves with the exiled real self, the authentic, genuine self, which is the Nefesh Elokis in Hasidic paradigm, um, that has gone into Galut, exile. The founder of IFS uh, is a Jew called Richard Schwartz, Dick Schwartz. You can find him everywhere on the internet. Um, uh, certainly worth uh, checking out what he, he teaches. Um, and uh, he's, he, he introduces this tremendously novel idea in psychology of the, of, of the higher self. Uh, which has certain characteristics by which it can be identified. It is inherently compassionate. It is inherently curious. The authentic self, the divine self, is calm, confident, connected, creative, courageous, and has clarity. So these are beautiful um, pointers to look for when we're, when we are trapped in reactivity, when we are when we are fearful, when we're anxious, when we're when we're angry or resentful, uh, it means that we are losing contact with our essential self, which is um, in, imprisoned in exile. And our task as Jews is to leave that constraint, in other words, to, to reconnect with our essential self and find resources to, to support ourselves to, to leave that prison that limits us. I wish everyone and bless everyone a Chassidah Chassidah Tova. It should be the best year ever and we certainly would uh, all together welcome the, uh, the Melech HaMoshiach in our midst and Be'ezra Sashem it should mamash be now. Thank you very much.